Hey there, pushy fella. You've been nonstop staring at me, getting in my way, licking me. I know you want to go, and I know where you want to go. You're just going to have to wait till they come pick you up. Pollyanna will get you soon. Well, good morning, Lionhearts. How are you today? We have an action-packed day ahead of us. Lots of things to do. We're going to hop on the train, run some errands, and uh, this should be a fun one. I plan on vlogging the Million Dollar Theater downtown. There's a great story that I had seen uh, Gloria Swanson tell in an interview, and I felt compelled to tell it today. So we're going to head downtown, meet up with some folks along the way, and uh, anything could happen today. I'm just warning you now, anything could happen. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. Well, I went ahead and portioned out all the wallpaper that's going to be shipped out here in about a couple of days, so it's ready, folks. I'm not going to be lagging on this. It'll go out like the first or second of the month. Let's go do some vlogging. I'm excited. All right, first stop today is we're going to meet up with some friends down at Clifton's Cafeteria. Where's he going? Once again, my life involves the train, and what's more Hollywood? Than this guy, Hollywood Adam, waiting for a train. Well, gang, check it out. They have completely painted the Angels flight cars and the front facade, and they're actually working on the track, so it looks like it's back in motion. And to get to our vlog today, we're cutting through the Grand Central Market, one of the hangouts of Charles Bukowski. Well, Lionhearts, here we are. Take it in. The Million Dollar Theater. Now you may have heard the word Million Dollar Theater before, because in 2000 Bono made a movie called Million Dollar Theater. But this has a great history. See, before the Sunset Strip, before any of that was a thing, before anyone was going and hanging out on the Sunset Strip for their nightlife, they all came here. Right here on Broadway, because Broadway was basically it was the central jazziest hub in the city. It's everybody hung out here every night. Vaudeville shows, uh, plays, movie premieres, they all took place down here. And this was the biggest, grandest theater of them all. Built in 1917 by Sid Grauman. This was like a theater where all of the main silent movies of the day were premiering. And what I actually loved about this place and why I wanted to vlog this was I had actually seen an interview a while ago with Gloria Swanson and she told a pretty fascinating story. We'll wait for this guy to go by and we'll resume the vlog. So in the early 1920s, Gloria Swanson was a massive star and she was a star for Paramount Pictures because she had made a lot of her movies with Cecil B. DeMille. The problem was that all of her pictures she felt were like show pony pictures, that they really didn't give her a chance to be a great actress, they were just showcasing basically her beauty with all of these fancy gowns and costumes of the day and she didn't really like that. Right in the height of her career, she decided to <laughs> marry a French marquis. She went and lived in France with him, and when she finally came back, she wanted everybody to call her Madame Marquis. And they did! Now, what was interesting is that when she came back from France, she took a boat back with her husband and her mother, and once they landed in New York, they had to work their way across the country. And at that time, Paramount was kind of worried that she was going to leave or maybe not resume acting, and uh, United Artists wanted her really bad. They decided to start courting her. So what happened was as she was traveling across the country, 
they would stage these elaborate kind of shows in her honor. Like, as she was traveling through the town in New Mexico, all of a sudden, like, a bunch of Indians on horseback came up and started circling her car, and her husband got really worried. He didn't, he didn't know what was going on. Um, and then all of a sudden, a bunch of cowboys on horseback came out and rescued her, and she laughed because she realized it was like a, kind of like a little publicity stunt in her honor. And so she started, she was dealing with this all the way across the country. But once she got back to California, made it to Los Angeles, they actually were gonna show one of her movies that she had completed, and they were gonna have a premiere for it. And she tells the story of how she's driving, or being driven down this street, down Broadway, to get to the theater, and on one side of the street, United Artists is throwing a massive party in her honor, and on the other side, Paramount's throwing a massive party in her honor. And everybody on both sides of the street are throwing flowers and throwing roses into her car, and she said, they were throwing so many roses that I wasn't even sitting on the car or like on the seats of the car anymore. I was literally sitting on beds of roses. The police couldn't even contain this crowd. And when she pulled up, it actually took so long for her to get here because of the crowd that she had missed the opening of the movie. So they had already started the movie. And when she walked into this theater, as soon as she graced the doors right at the top of the ramp, All of a sudden, all the lights in the theater came on, and she said they started playing Home Sweet Home, and everybody was cheering and going nuts for her, and she started crying, and, and she said they had pulled out every major superstar of the day was here to greet her. Francis X. Bushman, Valentino, Chaplin, just everybody was here. And she said it was almost overwhelming. She said Henri had never seen anything like this and didn't know what to think of it. And she said while she watched the movie, it started to hit her, um, and as she sat there, all of a sudden the police came in and said, we really need you to leave the theater now. We feel that it's no longer safe for you to be here. We can't contain the crowd. So as she's uh, being whisked out the side or back door, she, I forget which one it was, she said, she, she got in the car, and in those days to get from here back to Beverly Hills, she said it was about an hour drive, and she said, as we drove, I sat there and started crying and got depressed and she said my mother was on one side of me and, and Henri was on the other side of me. And one of them looked at me and said, why are you upset? This should be the best day of your life. And she said, you don't understand. They're not excited to see me because of my talent. It's just the fact that they haven't seen me in so long, it's the anticipation and it's just a fake anticipation. And she said, you don't realize that what I now know is that there's another side to this and that it all, at one point it will all come down. It will never be like this forever. And she actually got sad. Decided then that she didn't want to be confined to the contract that Paramount had always had for her. She didn't even know if she wanted to remain in Beverly Hills or if she wanted to go live in New York City or if she wanted to go back to France. And so when United Artists made her an offer of a million dollars a picture, she took it. Paramount didn't know she had taken it or knew that she was basically had her mind up, called her into the office and offered her $25,000 a week uh, to remain with Paramount and she said no and they said do you understand how much $25,000 is a week why don't you do the math and um, see how much that comes up to it might be worth your while and she said honey UA is gonna give me a million dollars a picture goodbye but she said that decision was made here because she realized what she'd become to Paramount what she'd become to the people the fans around her and that it probably would soon all go away once the fanfare of her being back in the country was over. The Million Dollar Theater. Built in 1918 by Sid Grauman. Now let's go over and take a look. I want to show you guys the ornate uh, kind of dome section of that over there. It's really interesting. Now of course over the years, you know, this whole story basically took place in 1925. Over the years, movie houses became more popular and it just, well, you know, you didn't have to travel all the way down here to see them, so they kind of fell by the wayside. But this was the original grand theater of the day. This was, like I said, it was called the Million Dollar Theater because 
At the time, there was no other million dollar theaters. There, nobody had invested that kind of money into making something this grand yet. And if you ever come down here to check it out for yourself, you can always read up. Once again, downtown did not fail when they put a little story telling just a little bit about this. They didn't tell pretty much anything that I just told you, but um, you can always find out a little bit of history while you're downtown if you don't know it yourself. Now check out this ornate ticket box. It's got the old kind of glittery, blingy mosaic tiles. So now we're gonna go over and we're gonna find where that little side exit to the theater was that they whisked her out of. And I believe it would have been right here. And her car would have been waiting right there. And of course, the theater just happens to be right across the street from the Bradbury building. You know, for me, one of the most fun parts about vlogging with this guy right here is his complete fascination with everything historical the same way I am. And so when we walk downtown, a lot of these things you've never seen or you've seen in movies and you've never been in person, so all of a sudden I've you're like- i seen it on the silver screen. I've never seen it in person. Until now, it's happening. Yes! All right, well, we're heading down to Clifton's finally, and uh, we're gonna meet up with some friends down there. And this ought to be a lot of fun because I always love going to Clifton's. I'm not even really that hungry, so I don't know if I'm gonna eat anything, but I love to go by there. Especially because I just went and watched Fight Club, you guys re remember, like at the wheel turn the other day? As I'm sitting there watching that, I go, they filmed part of that right in front of Clifton's. And this Los Angeles theater, this was also in Fight Club. If you remember when uh, Edward Norton, AKA Tyler Durden, is having his insomnia and goes to the movies, this is where he actually goes to the movies. I've been inside here for a few different things and recognized it right away. And I couldn't come down this direction without checking out the Palace Theater like I always do. Just because the Michael Jackson Thriller video, I'll always love coming here. They actually have a little bit of it lit up inside today, so you can kind of see a little bit more than normal. I know I've come here before and never really been able to get good shots, but you can kind of see inside now. See the second floor. That's where Michael Jackson would have rolled out of from Thriller right after the movie lets out. I didn't even notice a difference, you dude. I heard the moves like Jagger, but I got the moves like Michael. Don't put this in the vlog. You need a red jacket. Cut this out. Cut the, do, this. Oh, yeah, yeah, dude. Totally. To to absolutely. No, 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 no. I, I don't even think I'm filming right now. Well, look who we met, ran into down here. Let your light shine. Check out our YouTube. We're just telling her that uh, since we're here at Clifton's, and I was watching Fight Club. I noticed that Edward Norton stands right here and you can see the old Clifton sign before they redid the whole front facade. You can actually see it in the shot. And you actually see him looking at that building across here. Ah, Clifton's, it is no dream. Ah, ah, gotta love Clifton's. And before you can even go in and eat, you gotta look at the wolves. I'm not gonna eat you, but you are edible, baby. Look at that. How crazy is that? Alligator warning. Uh-oh, something went down in here. This is exciting because this is Mr. Wu's first time in Clifton's. Why is it called Brookdale? Technically in Brookdale? No, they used to have multiple locations and this was called the Clifton's at the Brookdale. Perhaps. They're recycling the trays instead of throwing the old trays. Are you a cop? What's with all the questions? Cool, check out this old peanut roaster. I feel like I'm in old Ebbets Field in Brooklyn right now. Well, well, well. If you insist, I shall. Dun, 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 dun. Look at all this cave. Look at that little diorama.
not exactly what you expect to see when you come inside of this little cave. That's an old phone. You see a castle inside of a restaurant and you just never know who lives inside there. That is no princess. That is Adam the Woo. I always love these chairs. So cool. Oh yeah, I always love looking at these chairs when I come here. Put them on. I already got some, I already have a pair. Put them on or taste the trash can. Uh, that trash, it's way down there though. What do you? I already have a pair. I'm giving you a choice. Either put on these glasses or start eating that trash can. Not this year. Okay. If you guys couldn't put it together yet, we are in the historic They Live Alley, where Roddy Roddy Piper and Keith David have their fight. The, in my opinion, the best fight scene of all time in most um, movie, AFI, all those that rank movies, they all call this the best fight scene of all time as well. And there's no way. That we were coming to downtown, Adam the Woo and I, who love, they live, there's no way we were coming down here and not gonna stop in this alley. And if you're trying to match it up, this is actually in the movie. You can see where they have patched up that line that goes along the side. And the dumpsters would have been right in there and yep, right here. Look! Look at them, they're everywhere! Well, we just popped in the historic Larry Edmonds bookshop and I bought a book with uh, postcards that you can pull out from the history of Hollywood and most of them are places that I've already vlogged. So some of you lucky uh, Patreons are gonna get these postcards. Well, Lionhearts, what a great day. I hope you guys enjoyed today. It was really fun to uh, get invited out by our friends Let Your Light Shine. Um, you know, Adam had met them before. This was the first time I've actually met them in person. We were at uh, one of the Random Land meetups and didn't meet each other. They've pretty much been watching my vlog since like the earliest days and we just always keep trying to find ways to meet up. And they had asked me last week if I could meet up this week and I said actually today is the first day that I'm eligible to work but I didn't get offered any work today. So this morning I woke up, saw an email saying hey we're still going to be there if you want to come meet up and I was like cool. I hit up Adam, I was like, do you want to go downtown? Because I know he loves downtown, and that was just a blast because we both have this weird fascination with just seeing things that we've seen in other movies, and every block we'd be walking by, we're like, whoa, that's from this, that's from this, like, just having a blast. Uh, today you guys got to see some history that was built in 1918, a story from 1926, 25, something like that. You got to see locations from Fight Club, They Live, I mean... We pretty much ran the gamut of history in Hollywood, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I just wanted to thank uh, the Tolisons for inviting me to come have lunch at Clifton's Cafeteria, which they know I love, so that was really nice of them. And uh, thank you, Jackie Clifford, for becoming a new Patreon. And who knows what will happen tomorrow, but I hope you'll come back and see me. Days with Jordan the Lion, calling it a night from Hollywood, California. Your old pal Jaws out partying with Pollyanna. I don't know when I'll see him again. He's got a life of his own, guys. I just think I'm just holding him back sometimes. Have a great night.